Hello everybody and welcome to part 10 of this animation series. This is probably going to be the last part, at least for the time being, and I would like to talk about the expression modifier in Modo. The expression channel modifier is probably something of the most powerful things in the animation toolset and unfortunately it is absolutely not well documented. Uh, let me stop this and let's go to the online help test text, the one you find in the internet. At the bottom of this page you find an interesting entry. Mr. Mutant Pixel wrote in April, this page is getting a big update in the next SP. And another person asked, is the big update scheduled for SP2? And the answer, the answer was yes sir. But obviously it didn't make it to SP2. What we have here in the help is really uh, a copy of the description of the MU parser. This is, uh, by the way, uh, the parser Modo is using. It's a mathematical ultra fast, fast parser, which has been written by Ingo Burke. And you see here what functions it supports and what operators uh, can be used. It also has an if-then-else operator which uses the C or C++ style uh, short syntax. Let's go back to this animation and I would like to point out a couple of things. Uh, as you saw, we can have some quite complex animations and the good thing is the only thing which is animated really is the set rotation of this locator. All the rest is being done with expression modifiers. I want to point out a couple of things. First, when I go to frame 23, have a look at this uh, outer ring here. If it goes to frame 24, it moves. Frame 24 is, as you see, we have a frame rate of 24, so it means this is exactly one second. And you could animate, for example, the second dial of a, a watch or a clock. The next one will be at frame 46. So, uh, sorry, 48, so 47, 48, and you saw it moved. My timeline is 120. This is something quite good when we look at the 360 degrees of um, a circle. Now, the next interesting frame is frame 30. So I go to 28 and then move to 29 and 30. And you see, in starting from frame 30, the red circle stops any movement. It compensates the rotation of the locator and the blue one starts moving. So these two wheels only move when they touch this rail here. So let's check this. The next interesting part is frame 60. Then these two sliders here will change their direction. So now we're at 60 and 61, they start moving 
backwards in opposite directions. So this is the animation and let's see how I did it. Uh, I expand this and here we have the complete rig for all these animations and two are even doing exactly the same thing so only one of them is needed. Let's have a look at it and an easy way to uh, approach such an expression is to add an expression modifier which has four entries a b c and d and provides an output and it can also have uh, a user channel so i connect the time of my time modifier to input a and my frame modifier to input b now if we look at these expressions and I really ask you to uh, have a look at this one help page to better understand there will be more explanation later but I have to start somehow so if we have here our time modifier then one entry is time and we can look at it by for example putting in an expression here it's a plus b which does not make a lot of sense but we can just put in an a and this will be output on the channel here so if I move this then you see the input a is 0 0.0417 and if I multiply this by 24 then I should get my frame number so I can go to the properties again and say a times 24 and then here in the channel view you see we get an output of 1 and if I cycle further on two three four five six seven and we can now check if this is really working well by for example uh, making this a bit so we do an if then else check and I say if a times 24 is equal to b question mark then I want b to be the output and otherwise and here comes a colon and it is a must you need the question mark and the colon otherwise it will not work otherwise we will output 99999 something like this can be a number or it can be uh, a variable. Let's check this. 5, 6, 7 and here you see it is outputting 99999. The reason is that uh, 0.2917 times 24 gives slightly more than 7 it gives 7.00008 or something but if I make such a comparison then it's definitely not the same so we need to make an integer out of this number which is with the function round to nearest integer a times 24 And now if I go to my channel display you see we have 7 here and 
this has made our uh, expression a bit more robust. This was just to start the discussion. Now let's check what we have in here. This is the one which makes the rotation on the outer ring. So here we have uh, an expression which does something every second. And what I do is first I divide my frame by 24. Now I can go and check. So this gives 8 times 24 gives 0 0.4167 and as I said at frame 24 it should go up to 1. So here you see we have frame 24 this gives us a 1. But I do something more in here. Now if I would use the floor with this. And don't worry, I will uh, explain this more, but as I already said, I have to start somehow. Um, we can go to this one again and then check what it produces here. So floor A divided by 24 and then you see we are on up to and including frame 23 we have an output of 0 and starting from frame 24 uh, uh, sorry this is A is time this should be B but I think I change the inputs, so put time to B, so we are consistent with the rest. Now if I go to here, we see we have a value of 1. At frame 48 it will be value of 2. At frame 72 it is 3 and at frame 96 it will be a 4. So this is our 5 frames from uh, or 5 seconds and the next thing is I don't want to have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 I want to have this multiplied by 24 so we can do this here times 24 and now we get 0, 24, 48 and so on. When we run this animation as you can see here we need to uh, Twenty six and so on. And here we have our second. The exact same thing we could do differently, namely like this, by using the time. So I connect this to here and run and you see we have exactly the same rotation. Now for the wheels, this is the red wheel. The expression looks like this. It says if the rounded integer of a divided by 60 is 1, then I want a to be times minus 3, which will compensate the rotation up here. Otherwise, I want a to be 
times minus 6. The minus 3 minus 6 comes from the 120 frames. 3 times 120 is 360. Now, this might not be so very obvious, and to be honest, this is not very readable. We could do exactly the same, because you otherwise would exactly have to know when an integer is rounded to figure out what this will be. Namely, this is only true between frame 30 and frame 89. So we can do exactly the same and say if a is greater or equal to 30 and a is less than 90, which means then I want to have this uh, rotation. Let's see if this is true. We have changed the code now for the red wheel and I play the animation and you see it is absolutely exactly the same as the one expression we had before. Here for the blue wheel the expression is the same as we originally had for the red one except that in Instead of having two equal signs, it is an not equal to 1. So between 30 and 89 it's 1 and the rest of the timeline it's something else, not 1. As you probably agree, this notation here is much easier to understand and also maybe debug. The last thing here is the expression I use to change the direction of my sliders up here. And you see here the expression and I think you must figure this out by slowly approaching this formula and I have some other examples. The number 200 in here and the number 0.6 depends on the timeline, the size of your model and you find these numbers by looking at the channel output here. So this is a a valuable debugging aid. You can also detach this, then you have the properties and the channel next to each other. Now I wish you uh, a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun to work with these expressions and I would like to point out some additional things. So I go to this PowerPoint thing as I said, the parser is called Mu Parser and it has been initially written by Ingo Burke. It's open source under the MIT license. I think either it is poorly implemented under Modo or it's simply not documented. So, for example, there is no syntax check whatsoever. The statement will just fail. It will not do what uh, we expect. This is why I say it is good to have such an expression modifier here and then slowly work towards the final expression and check out the intermediate results. So back to my PowerPoint. Um, it is allowed to have spaces in the statement, so A space plus space B and so on. It is allowed to have multiple statements but they work only on a single invocation of the parser and 
the statements must be separated by a comma. And the last value, which has been either calculated or has been exposed, will be the output. So if I assign 11 to A, 22 to B, 33 to C, and then comma B, then the output will be 22. Another thing which uh, caught me at the beginning is the built-in variables must be uppercase. Otherwise, it just fails, as I say in the top statements. And another thing which is not so good is uh, these variables are reset every time when the parser is called. And I didn't find a way of using external variables because if we could have something like global variables which, which stay and it is absolutely possible with doing this with uh, a good wrapper around this parser, uh, then it would even be more powerful. So something like this. For example, with this statement, I check if the result can be divided by 5. It is a common way of finding out these uh, divisions. And if it is, then I would like to assign the variable C, the value of B, and output C. Unfortunately, uh, the next time I run this, C will be zero again, so this statement is in fact valid, but it will not do what we expect. The same is true for a statement like this, something which is uh, uh, often done in any programming language is uh, that I have a counter logic. I continuously count up the value in B. And for example, if it reaches whatsoever 30, I do something. But B will always be 1. So that does not work. I try to use a user channel, uh, but I also could not use them as external variables. I found out that P is implemented. So if I go back to my thing here and I put in underscore lowercase letters p, go to my channel, then you see the output is 3.1416. I don't know uh, how the precision of these floating point values are, but in fact if we have p then we could even do our own revolve modifier. So back to this here. Uh, something else, animated channels have to be disconnected to be manually manipulated. Also here I show this quickly. If for example I have this mesh here, now Let's take this one. Rotation Z is so is wired in, so you see I cannot rotate it in the Z direction. It is better visible here. It is grayed out. So if I need to rotate this, I must disconnect it and now I can rotate as I like. So control Z and I put this back in and go back to my foil. Here I have put in a couple of working and valid statements. So for example here I make an expression which does exactly the same thing as the clamp channel modifier which is supplied by Modo. I ask is 
uh, input b less than 30, then I want b to be 30. If it is larger than 90, I want b to be 90. Now we have from 0 to 30, it will always be 30. From 90 to 120, it will always be 90 for whatever reasons we would need such a timeline. Then we have average sum, the maximum of up to four values, the minimum, we have floor and we have ceiling. Then here, for example, I do what I did in my uh, red wheel example. I check if something is between 30 and 89. If it is, I output B, otherwise I output 0. Here is the other one. I check if B, the rounded integer of B divided by 60, is 1. All these uh, if-then-else. The part before the question mark is the if part. Then before the colon between the question mark and the colon is uh, the then part and after that comes the else part. Theoretically, in the standard notation of C and C++ in the short form, we could have several um, instructions in between the question mark and the colon, but I am not so certain if this really works. I tried it. It works as long as the expression is true. It doesn't work as soon as the expression is false. So this is a statement I used to reverse the direction at 60. Here is another way we can assign either a number directly, as I did on one of the examples, or we can assign a variable, in this case c, with a number, check if uh, something is equal to b, and then output b if it is true, and output c if it is false. And here is another example. I think these are probably the most used uh, expressions for animation. You can also use the expression modifier for um, particles. It is exactly the same documentation as here for animation. And for the particle output, I think we would get nice things with uh, sinus, cosinus, and so on. Here is an example of floor you get 0 to 11 if floor A is divided by 12. You get 1 from 12 to 23, 2 from 24 to 35. And if you change the value to seal for sealing, you get 1 here, 2, 3, and so on. It's just the higher value. So, this concludes my findings of uh, the expression modifier. I think it is a very, very powerful uh, way of working with animations, something which is much easier than to do with the logics which are built into Modo, with the if a bigger and so on. It's easier to understand, it's easier to read, and it's easier to change. So, again, thanks for watching. I hope it helped and you find it useful. Take care and have fun modeling with Modo. See you some other time. And by the way, if you find out something new about the use of this expression modifier, please put it in the comments and the thing which I would find most useful is using external variables. This would make life very, very much easier. 
So thanks again, see you some other time and bye bye.